Welcome everyone to Education 638, Health Education for Teachers. I'm Dr. Devin Beasley, your instructor for this course. And in this presentation, I wanna give you an introductory overview of our course and provide some expectations. This is a one unit course. It's offered completely online, so there's no face-to-face -face meeting time required. The course is also considered asynchronous, which means there's no specific time you're required to log in and access the course information. You can log in at any time, just be sure that you are aware of all the weekly expectations and the due dates of any assignments. The course uses Moodle, which is FPU's online learning management system, and the course does assume that you have some knowledge using Moodle. If you're unfamiliar with Moodle, there are some video tutorials and resources you can view to help you with understanding Moodle a bit more. And these can be found at learning.fresno.edu. This is a six week course and each week is broken up by what are called modules. Each module will be opened on Monday and will include all of your expectations for the week. Typically assignments are due by 11.55 p.m. each Sunday, but there may be some required uh, during the week. So be sure you check to see during, within each module when assignments are actually due. Now, it's important that I emphasize working during the week. Many times when you wait until the weekend to complete any of your required assignments or activities, it does pose a problem, not only for you, but for your classmates as well. So be sure you begin your work early and spend a little time throughout the week working on course assignments. As you take a look at the syllabus, you'll see my contact information, and this is also posted in Moodle as well. If at any time during our course you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm here to help you with understanding the course content and answer any questions you may have. In Moodle, I also have a Q&A form created for you, and you can post any course-related questions within that Q&A form. And when posting a question, everyone in the course can view the question, and everyone can even respond to it. So it's a great form to begin using for general course-related questions. I will typically respond to questions within a 24-hour period, but if you see a question there and you know the answer, feel free to respond. For the most part, my responses are limited on weekends, which is another reason why you should work a little bit during the week. On Saturdays, I periodically check emails and respond to questions, but I do not check any emails or respond to any questions on Sunday. So if you have a question posted um, and you post that during the weekend, it may not be responded to until the following Monday. Taking another look at the syllabus, you'll see the teacher performance expectations or TPEs listed there. Although I won't review each of these in depth here, they will be addressed throughout this course and throughout the program. The course Student Learning Outcomes, or CSLOs, will also be addressed throughout the course. And these are the things that you should be aware of as well. So take some time and familiarize yourself with these if you've not done so already. Now, regardless of what grade level you plan to teach, all teachers, in my opinion, are considered health teachers or health educators and should give special attention to health-related issues that students face. And this is an area that often goes unaddressed and even ignored. The overall health of students can have a direct impact on overall wellness and educational performance. Health encompasses so many different aspects of life. For those of you who remember the concepts of wellness course, uh, issues of health address physical, spiritual, social, emotional, and even intellectual wellness. And all of these are different components of wellness that are uh, or should be addressed within education. And all of these work together and affect a student's ability to learn and be successful in the classroom. So addressing the various health-related issues can not only help us recognize the concerns that our children are facing, but also better prepare us as educators to meet and improve the health and welfare of the students that we teach. There are health-related standards that need to be, be addressed within all grade levels, and it's important that we spend some time, more than just a few minutes a week, addressing those health-related standards. So through this course, I hope that you become aware of these health-related problems that children face in school. I hope you understand how to address those effectively and seek in, uh, ways to improve the overall health of our students. Now, Following the catalog description of the course and the syllabus, you will see what we call the signature assignment for our class. And this is the integrated health lesson plan. You will develop drafts of this lesson plan throughout the course and I'll provide you some feedback uh, within each step along the way so that you have an effective lesson plan at the end. There's also a rubric provided for this assignment which can be found in the syllabus. So as you're working on your lesson plan, be sure that you compare what you have developed with what the rubric expectation states. 
Additionally, there are discussion forums and wikis that you're responsible for participating in throughout the course, and there will be some topics that are presented to you that you must reflect on and post your response in addition to responding to your classmates. And these discussion forums are designed to mimic an in-class discussion or dialogue, and there is a threaded discussion rubric also that you need to follow, um, so make sure that your posts and responses are substantial. Now with your wiki post, you'll follow a similar format to responding to your students, but a wiki is simply a document that allows a collaborative editing and posting of information. And these will serve as an ongoing discussion and resource to reflect on throughout the class. And although you're not writing a paper, when you're posting your responses in a discussion form or wiki, you do need to adhere to the same expectations for spelling, grammar, punctuations, in addition to following appropriate netiquette, which is online discussion etiquette. And we'll talk more about that um, throughout the course. You may want to get into the habit of typing your posts and your responses in a Microsoft Word document and then transferring that information into Moodle. Also, you may want to balance your responses between classmates, which means if you notice that someone has multiple responses to something that they've posted and someone else doesn't have any responses, be sure you respond to those classmates who have minimal or no responses to their posts. That way you don't have one person loaded with all the responses. In some Moodle modules, there's also a journal entry that I call Muddy Points. And I use this information just to help guide me throughout the course and to obtain feedback from you. Within these Muddy Points, I just want you to highlight um, some of the important things that you've come across throughout the week, some things that you may find challenging, some things that you may find confusing, or just something you'd like to see more of. Either way, this is your opportunity to share with me your thoughts and your opinions. Now, the required textbook for the course is the Meeks Height and Pager text. Now, while all the course information has been developed using the 8th edition, if you happen to have the 7th edition, you'll also be fine. This is a fairly large textbook, but if you notice, most of the second half of the text is actually resources and references, so don't be intimidated by the size of the text. And just in case you have not obtained your textbook yet, chapters 1 and 2 have been scanned and posted into Moodle for you, but be sure you do obtain your text as soon as possible as other chapters will not be provided for you. So take a moment and read through the remainder of the syllabus. You are responsible for understanding and familiarizing yourself with all of the expectations in the course, as well as the university expectations, whether I have personally reviewed them with you or not. Give some attention to the course schedule, the related topics, and all of the assignments. Take a look at some of the expectations for the weekly modules, the homework expectations, and even the estimated time it should take to complete assignments. So it gives you an opportunity to understand how much time you should be spending as you're completing the assignments. I will have some additional information posted within each module to help you with understanding some of the weekly expectations and course assignments, but take some time and navigate through the course. Take a look at the various forms, the links, and the resources that I've posted there for you. There's a lot of information to take in, and it may take some time to get acclimated to the online environment and the expectations, but just take your time and just kind of browse through some of those things I have posted for you. If you do have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me. Although this is an online course, I don't want you to feel that I'm out of reach. You have all of my contact information, so please don't hesitate to use it. And that should do it for now. I will have some additional information in the module for the first week, so be sure you take a look at that as well. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you online.